All right, guys, we're away from noise today. Take a little bit more time. I'm gonna explain four things. Maybe it's physics, maybe it's, uh, uh, it's man and machine, scientific, whatever it is, but I'm gonna match the bike up to the body in four different ways, just like I talked to you guys about intuition, instinct, and initiation, okay? That is your ingredients of how to go about it. This is how we match you up to the motorcycle. Okay, so as you know, this motorcycle, as it's built, is all the weights down low. The more weight you put down low, the better the bike handles as you see these, the wheels, the swing arm, the engine, even the uh, radiators, the gas tanks are in the middle, down low, all that. So we, if saying that, and the highest point of this motorcycle is a cable, that means we need to follow this. This motorcycle has been designed one way and has never been changed. The front wheel, the rear wheel, the engine, and the handlebars have all been in the same location. Yes, it's changed over, you know, progression, but the idea is the same. You can't put the rear wheel in the front and the front wheel in the, in the back and call it a motorcycle and think that it's going to work better. So if the bike has to work one way, it's been designed one way, the body's the same. So how do we match that up? All the weights down low, that means I need to control the motorcycle at the lowest point possible from bike to ground, closest to the rear wheel, that's controlling 90% of the motorcycle. And that's at my feet. I can't be flat footed because I got to turn my toes out. I can't be flat footed because I'll be going backwards and I'll be in a constant pull. I can't be flat footed because the first point of contact from body to bike when standing is your feet and it'll be met with stiffness, not softness. So I need to bring my feet back to my toes this way. And again, two clicks, two pounds, two millimeters, I change the bike. I weigh 175 pounds. I just put 175 pounds, four to six inches back to my rear wheel where all the horsepower, traction, and inertia comes from. So again, all the weights down low to make the bike handle well, we control the motorcycle down low. Second point, this motorcycle's one, but it's two. It has a front end and a rear end and they work off the sit, okay? I can grip onto my handlebars till the grips pop out the end and I'll never control the motorcycle or the rear end of it from the front end. I'm trying to control the motorcycle at the highest point possible, furthest away from the rear wheel that has no control of the rear wheel. All right, so I want to make sure when I'm on the motorcycle that I'm not doing this because if I tuck my butt around my back, that means like I'm welding the front end to the rear end. You've heard me say this many times before, but again, I like to repeat myself a lot because a lot of people just don't know how to listen. They hear, but they don't listen. So that, and if we were here riding motocross, there'd maybe be three people here that like to go fast in a straight line. We have to have this separation. So that's where we unlock our hips this way with our rear end from our hips to our feet going to the rear end of the motorcycle, our hips to our head going to the front end of the motorcycle, and that'll allow that separation happen, and then it won't come out into the arms. If I tuck my butt around my back flat-footed, everything is into my arms, and I'm also using more energy, and I'm not as efficient because I'm not using the body properly. So rotate your hips out, don't tuck them in, rotate them out, and then you'll have the same thing as this motorcycle called separation, all right? Third thing is, everything on this motorcycle has to move to its true potential. If my clutch has a little bit too much play, if this is too much too hard, if my front fork's a little bit too soft, I'm coming out and I'm coming and fixing it. Even if my tires are a little bit too hard, I come and take a little bit of air at it. So if everything on this motorcycle has to move to the true, its true potential to ride it, the way it's been designed to its true potential, well then the body is the same. And if you're not doing this, you are lost, okay? Every joint needs to move on this body. Every joint, wherever you're locked up, you will be affected. So if you lock, ride flat-footed, you're affected from there. If you ride with your hips tucked, you're affected from there. If you ride with tight arms, because you're always in a constant pull or a push, you're affected from there. If your head's locked up, you're affected from there, okay? If everything on this motorcycle has to move smoothly, then every joint of this body has to move smoothly. And if you don't believe me, who won the last two and who's usually the strongest at the end of the race? Hmm? Someone called Cooper Webb, okay? More joints being used because he doesn't wear any braces. All right, so he's a little bit stronger to me at the end of the race in Roxton, not by maybe fitness, but maybe by being more efficient. If someone could use 10, if I could say, I'll give you 10% more traction, 10% more suspension, 10% more horsepower, 10% more fitness, would you take it? People would give me a million dollars. What if I gave you 10% more efficiency because the body's working and at the end of a 20 minute moto, you, you save 10% more energy so then you're stronger. How about that one, okay? So one, the, the weight. Two, separation. Three, every joint just like every part. Now four, 
This bike has been designed to dissipate the energy by the time it gets to the grips. The worst thing is to have a harsh feeling in your hands when you're riding, okay? If that, that, this is everything. Everything comes from your hands, your feet, and your, and your butt, and your wheels. That's where your feeling comes from. So if I have a bad feeling in my hands, I can't ride, I get arm pumped, my front end pushes, whatever. So this bike has been designed to dissipate that energy through the tires, through the rims, through the swing arm, through the suspension, through the chassis, through the triple clamps, through the rubber mounted bars. Oh, no crossbar for more uh, soft uh, softness, softer grips. So the same thing. The three most important things of motocross is keeping my head still, my chest directed the way I want, and my arms loose. So I need to dissipate all that energy by the time it gets up to my tips, okay? Through my toes, because again, I ride on my toes. I ride on my toes. So I have, I have movement here and at my ankle. So I have double the movement than most people do. But again, my feet are so damn strong from the training that I do and then the way I ride and all these different things. Because again, I could have Ken Roxon's factory bike here, but if I had four year old tires that are worn out, I could ride a stock bike faster. So if saying the first point of contact is the most important thing, what about your feet? Most people are in boots that have, that have metal planks. Then they ride bicycles all the time that have carbon fiber planks. Then they're in shoes that are all squishy and mushy. And so their feet don't ever have to feel the ground. They don't have to stabilize. They don't have to move. They don't have to groove. And your foot is one of the most complex parts of the whole entire body. And everything starts from there, but nobody focuses on that. So that's a good point. So back to what I'm talking about, through my toes, through my ankles, through my knees, through my hips, through my spine, because every, every joint moves, through my shoulders, through my elbows, through my neck, okay? If everything has to move on this motorcycle, then every part of the body does too. So again, the four most important parts of the motorcycle, I just matched up the body to it. So as you see, we're one. And that's why you dance with the motorcycle, you don't fight with the motorcycle. That's why it's intuition, instinct, initiation, not reaction, because reaction's from the past, it's done. So, hope you enjoyed that.